Generating subtitles and captions for your videos has always been tedious, expensive, or both. Whether you did it the manual way by making your own SRT file, adding in all the specific timings and doing that all manually, or going out to a website to pay other people to do it for you, or even pay an AI to do it. Either way, you're spending a lot of time or money or both. Thankfully though, Premiere Pro finally has a new update that does all of these captions and subtitles automatically in a fraction of the amount of time that it would normally take. It doesn't take too long, it's built directly into the new update of Premiere Pro and it is now available publicly. So to start off, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is open up your Adobe Creative Cloud app. From there, you're gonna to want to double check if there's any updates. There should be an update for Premiere Pro if you haven't already updated it. This should be the update that has the auto caption feature in it. And if there is an update, go ahead and click update. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and start editing your video normally. From my workflow experience, Using this tool, I found it easier and faster to do all of my normal editing first. And then from there, I would do the captioning at the end. That way the subtitle track at the top didn't get in the way of any ripple edits that I was doing, but it may make things faster for you if you can actually see what the words are as you're editing. So that's up to you to decide what you wanna do with that. So if you're following along editing the way that I did, once you're finished cutting up your video, you're gonna to want to transition over to the captions workspace. This just felt a little bit easier for me to handle everything. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you will want to go up to window and then select the text window. This window will be where all the captions will be going. So the text window will be kind of important for this whole sequence. If you're happy with your edit, you can go ahead and click transcribe this sequence. And then I think what happens in the background is that Premiere will export a, uh, an audio track of the video that you just made, upload it to the cloud, and then do all the transcribing in the cloud, and then send it back down to you on Earth. I think that's how it works. That's kind of what I gathered from what I was able to read into it, but I'm not too sure exactly. When you click transcribe this sequence, a little pop-up window will appear, and it will give you a few options to choose from. There's a way that you can select different clips and tag them as dialogue. I didn't do that, so this option was grayed out for me, so I went with the other option, which was the default at the time. Next up, you're gonna have a language. I speak English, so I chose English. And then there's an option where you can choose which audio track to use. Uh, if you have multiple different mics for different people, maybe you only wanna transcribe one person at a time which then you would select only one mic instead of both or a mix or which other one. Then there's a little checkbox that says transcribe into out points only. This is helpful if you have your sequence pretty much all cut up, but you have some extra clips on the side that are outside of your in into out point. You don't want to transcribe those, then you select this checkbox and then you don't have to worry about having those have transcriptions with them as well. Then there's the merge with other transcriptions button. Uh, I only had the one transcription to do, so there weren't any others that I needed to merge with. So I didn't bother checking this checkbox. And then finally, there's the checkbox for letting Premiere recognize if multiple people are talking at the same time. Again, it's just me talking in this video that I was editing, so I only needed the one transcription. So I didn't bother checking this because there wasn't another person for Premiere to recognize. Underneath all that, there's a description about how this process works and then there's the transcribe button. From here, we can see the little updates in the text window saying that it's uploading to the server, how many minutes are left, and then it'll pop up once it's all done with the new text window with each individual line ready to go. So now that the transcription is finished, we're gonna get all these different lines of text, but nothing will be showing up on the timeline or on the video yet. So if you're wanting subtitles on the screen, during the video, you can go and select the button that says create captions. From there, there's gonna be another pop-up window. I don't know enough about subtitles and captions to be able to know what the difference is between all these options. So I just leave everything default here and then I press create. From there, we'll see this new line that shows up at the top of the timeline window. This is the line of all the little text boxes that create the actual captions. This will show up separately from the video and audio tracks. 
This is a specific subtitle track and it works more or less the same as a normal track. You can drag the sides to make them longer and shorter. You can press the eyeball to hide the layer if you want, which will obviously make it non-visible from the video in the final export. So if we zoom into the timeline, we can see that Premiere Pro has done a very precise job at starting and finishing each subtitle block when the speaker starts and finishes talking. So it leaves a blank space between uh, sentences, for example. This is fine. I don't think people will be too upset if there's uh, a space where the subtitles turn off and then turn back on again. But sometimes I just prefer to extend the end part of that clip to the start of the next one, just so that there's no blinking on and off of the subtitles. But that's more of a personal decision. It doesn't have to be what you do for yours. So now from here, since it was all automated, there's bound to be some errors in the typing. So I'm just gonna go through the whole video and read through all of the subtitles that were generated and just double check that everything that was said is transcribed correctly. You can see here that there's a little bit of weird stuff going on at the end of this video. So obviously I have some work to do to make them correct. So that's pretty much the majority of how to use these subtitles and captions inside of Premiere Pro. If you're a YouTuber, for example, and you're just wanting to create subtitles so that you can upload them into YouTube, because I have heard rumors that YouTube will boost you in the algorithm if you do have these subtitles. I'm not sure if that's correct, but if that is you, you can hide the subtitle track inside of the timeline by pressing the little uh, eyeball that will hide it from the video and then you don't have to worry about that anymore. Then you go to the text window, go to the top right of that window, click on the three dots and then export SRT file. This will give you a file that is pretty much widely accepted on most websites as an official uh, subtitled file. So now if we go to export our video from Premiere, you'll see down on the right hand side of the export window, there's a little tab that says captions. If you go here, you have the option to add captions to your video. Burning the captions into your video is basically what makes the captions show up on the video, showing in the video like this. Then you also have the option to export a sidecar file. I'm almost positive that this is the exact same file that will be generated as if you were to do it like we did earlier from the text window, exporting the SRT file. I like to do both just to make sure that uh, I'm not missing anything. It's better to have two than none, in my opinion, even though it's easy to just go back and open up the project again if I miss one, but I just always end up checking the add the sidecar file anyways, but that's up to you. And then finally, you also have the none option, which just leaves the captions where they are. So that is pretty much it for Premiere Pro. Uh, I figured that since I'm assuming a lot of YouTubers will probably watch this video, or at least people that upload their videos to YouTube, I figured I'd show you how to upload these SRT files. So if you go and upload a video like you normally do to YouTube, uh, you do the whole first page like you would normally, you add your title, your description, your tags and all that stuff. And then you go to the second tab, which says video elements. At the top there, you'll see the subtitles. When you click add, there's gonna be another pop-up window that shows three different options. You can add a file, you can do it automatically, or you can type it in manually. You're gonna to wanna to select upload a file, navigate to where you have that SRT file saved and then select that and upload it. You'll also wanna make sure that you add the with timing option instead of without. This will just make sure that all the words you say will show up in the correct time that Premiere Pro generated. Once you upload that file, you'll instantly see this window change. Uh, it'll show all the timings and the text individually, but after that step, your subtitles are now basically in your YouTube video. If you're curious what an SRT file is exactly, you can right click and open with Notepad++ and actually see what the text is inside of this file. All it is is basically a list of numbers that show the line number, the timing of each line, and then the words in each subtitle line. So it's pretty simple and that's pretty much the standard on how most uh, video sites read the subtitle files. Once you're all finished with that, you can go ahead and click done. And now your whole journey with subtitles is now finished. 
Once you have your video uploaded, you can go ahead and check and just double check that you did it all right. If you didn't, hopefully you can go back through this video to see what the problem was. I believe in all of you that you can all do this correctly. So I hope you enjoyed this video or at least learned something today. If you liked it, drop a like, and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.